All right. Coming live from the west side of Birmingham, you guys, I got the legendary, one of the greatest golden bears of all time, Miles College's very own Wayne Thomas. Um, catching up with you, man, we played semi-pro together, a little bit of flag football. Um, tell the people what kind of awards you won while you was at Miles College. Oh, man, Miles College. I won, first of all, to God be the glory, because without him, there would have, would have been no me and the things that I've done in my career, and as well as the things that I've done, you know, growing up. Um, I have nothing to be ashamed of. I feel like I really haven't disappointed him, you know, with the things that I've been doing, because it's been a great life, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, back to your question, Miles College Awards. Um, I was trying to think of put them in order. Might have started around my sophomore season, um, first team, all conference, uh, offensive, uh, offensive MVP on the team, uh, second junior year, first team, all conference, first team, all American, uh, most valuable offensive player on my team. Uh, my senior year, um, player of the year, SIAC player of the year, uh, first team, uh, All-American, All-Conference, um, and I also won, I can't think of the name of the award, but it's like it resembles the Black College Heisman Trophy, so. Okay, so you did very good at Miles College. A lot of people don't know this, but in high school, Miles was actually my first scholarship offer. Wow. That's when Coach Streeter was there. Okay. So, okay. Other than that, that's good. So, you transition from Miles, you end up going, playing in different leagues. How did you enjoy that experience, moving around, trying out for the NFL, making a team, then playing arena, playing in this and this league? How did you enjoy that experience? The experience was amazing because football is a brotherhood. You know, it's like, it's almost like the military. It's an organization. So when you play football, you meet people all around the world that really, really love this sport and are blessed to play this sport. So the experience was amazing that I got to travel all around the world chasing after that little brown oval ball. Mm -hmm. You know, that little brown oval ball took me all <laughs> took me all around the world. You know, and um, it was amazing to be able to meet so many guys that people see in like Randy Moss, you know, yeah. I've had a chance to kick it with him and, and guys like um, Antonio Langdon. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna name some of my local stars. Yeah, yeah. You know, Ramon Luster and, and guys that put in that work. You know, it was it was amazing to, that a sport that I didn't choose to play chose me. Okay, and you mentioned local stars. Well, amongst Birmingham. Very, very, Alabama's a very talent rich state. So, amongst Birmingham, when I think of high school football, I think of you. Wow. I think of guys like Josh Stillings. I think of David Palmer, wow. Chad Jackson. Wow. I think of guys like uh, Carlos Dansby that wow. just went into the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame. Wow. Uh, some of the guys, you know, maybe a, a Darius McClure. Yo, when, in your time, wow. who was the baddest dude in high school in the state of Alabama? was so many and I'm not saying bad because y'all saw the highlights that was on TV I'm saying bad because when the highlights wasn't rolling these cats were still cooking man so of course man David Palmer uh, Michael Howard uh, Vincent Davis um, in my era Otis Thornton Ramon Luster Man, I can name so many guys mm -hmm. off that Inchley High School team. And I don't, <laughs> fellas, don't be offended because I ain't call your name, but all of my squads at Inchley High School was stacked. With stacked, talent. okay. We were stacked with some of the best talent that I've ever seen. I've played football on so many teams. Okay. But that team was stacked. So shout out to all the cats that played at Inchley. But um, Robert Davis. Uh, Joe Webb. Okay. Uh, 
Man, there's so many. So many. It's the it, talent so rich many, state. Man. I'm, I, talent it's the talent rich state, man. Okay. Shout out to all the cats that played it. Okay. West End, they kept some bruisers. Parkers, J.O.'s, uh, Fairfields yeah. back in the days. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're going about way back to when Angela was um, – a team called the Kicks 106 Ooh, Team of the Week. Well, there you go. So if you go way back there, then you really know that Ensley used to really, really be yeah. known. Yeah. For okay. Football. So in high school, what was that game that you still think about to today? Because for me, it's my senior year, and we were in the second round of the state playoffs, and we made it to play the mighty Hoover Bucks, and we played them at the uh, – at the Hoover Met, mm -hmm. and they scored, and kind of like how you watch the movies, uh, a guy named Stanley King took the kickoff return back untouched. We thinking the game's over, but we end up losing. So it, I always think about that still to the day. It bothers me that we didn't win because we were the better team. So for you, going all the way back to like your high school day, what's that game you still remember not? you like, dang, we should have won that game. Football. Yeah. Uh, and you played multiple sports, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, good deal, good deal. Yeah, so football, that's a good question. We should have won in the playoffs. We ended up meeting Etowah. And, uh, man, we jumped out. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, it just kind of went left. And the momentum changed, and that was it. And that was the first time we had gotten that close in years in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And we was going to play Parker the next round, which I would have faced my cousin Michael Howard, which yeah. later became my quarterback at Miles. So mm -hmm. that relationship goes so far back is why you see that those numbers, those type of numbers was put up at Miles, 56 touchdowns and who knows how many <laughs> catches and how many yards mm -hmm. and all that stuff because me and Mike was all about the touchdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah Etowah, man. Etowah was that team that I just wish we could have got that game right back. Okay. Um, you transitioned from obviously playing ball, playing, coaching, doing a lot of things in the neighborhood. How did you move on and transition into the next phase of your life when you say, you know what, I'm not going to be playing as much because it seemed like – especially a person like you with such God-given ability, you will always, people always say, hey, man, I got a semi-pro team, come on, play. I got a flag football team. When did you feel like it was time to transition into other aspects of your life? Man, I had a son in 2005. And when my son got here, I was at the, the height of my career, and I had already had played enough. I was at the height of it. I was, like, ready to, like, you know what? This is my last season, 2005, 2006 was my last season, and which that's where this championship ring mm -hmm. came from. And this championship ring means the most to me because out of all my years of playing football, from Inchla Broncos to <laughs> Inchla High School mm -hmm. to Miles College to the Birmingham Steel Dogs to getting cracks in the league, you know, with teams, this is the most important because I gave 100% effort for the first time in football, mm -hmm. my last season. Your last season. So my son was born, I was like, you know what, it's time. Uh, I done played this game eight years professionally, and now I got a son that's gonna grow up that I hope does not play football, mm -hmm. but I'll need to be there so that he can he can blossom and get, every, get all of me. So I ended up saying, this is my last season, I'm gonna give 100% effort, I'm gonna see how it's gonna turn out. Okay. Um... So then you transition. Now, this year you did something very unique, something I would say probably in the last few years, Sam Shade used to do it, Jameis Winston does it. But you start having camps, and you brought it to the heart of Birmingham. What, what inspired you to do your camps, first of all, and then to kind of bring them to where you're from, not take them somewhere else where it's prettier or nicer, but to bring it to where you can reach your people? So, growing up without a father, mm -hmm. growing up without a mentor, growing up without uh, influence, once I transitioned from 
playing football dad because I had already had a daughter mm -hmm. that was um, 11 when my son came. So she was good because, you know, daughters usually hang with mom and everything. So while I was traveling and everything, she would be good. But when I got this boy, I knew he was going to probably want to play sports. So it was important for me to give him everything that I didn't have, a mentor, influence, and, and, and everything that I will try to lead him down the right path. Luckily, I went to go take him to sign up for a little league team at Park West, thinking that I was going to be able to just take him sit back and be dad and God pulled me in to coach. Okay. So that's when the transition started. I started I went in coaching five year olds, helping coach five year olds and I was the Gatorade coach. I was the <laughs> stop him from crying coach. I was the go talk to the parent coach. I was the teach him football coach. I was the so I kinda seen where I was at. And I was like, okay God, what you doing? Like we, I said I didn't want to play football because football was my love. Mm, what was your love? Was oh, basketball love. was your love. Okay. Football just blessed me to see opportunity in life and a paycheck. Yeah. But basketball was my heart. I left Ensley High School in 11th grade and transferred to Central Park Christian. So I gave up all of Florida and all of the, the Notre Dame and all the scholarships in football to transfer to Central Park Christian to play basketball because that was my love. Mm -hmm. But... um. Back to that question, just teach, taking my son to these different parks and seeing what was needed. He needs somebody to help him work on his footwork. He just need a little bit more attention. He gonna be good. He moves better left to right. God just started giving me this special sense to look at kids and see their weakness, translate it to them, and get perfection out of them. Just that simple. I call it crayon knowledge. Crayon knowledge, that's hey a good man, term. Hey man, turn your feet in and you gonna get over there faster. Don't cross them over. Keep them, keep them wide. Next thing you know, that kid that ran down and made a tackle just like that because I put it in crayon knowledge. Okay. So I brought that count to Birmingham, to, to the city, to the hood, because the hood is crayon knowledge. It ain't internet. It ain't YouTube. <laughs> it ain't nothing. It's like we're going to play football on this court. We're going to fall. You're going to get scraped. That'll let you know not to fall no more like that. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring them in here, and we're going to give it to them so that when you get out there, you'll have a foundation in you. Okay. Because a techno technological foundation in football don't last. Don't long. last. Okay. Yeah. So now you had your camp and you transitioned to other things. You was telling me about you doing a movie. You got some other things. Tell us a little bit about some of the other things that Wayne Thomas is venturing off into that you kind of enjoy doing. Man, I enjoy going to church. Shout out to my pastor, Pastor Thomas Beavers, who God is put that influencer and that and that that peer in my life that I could be transparent to. So since I ain't been hanging under his right hand, I'm his I'm his armor bearer, um, God has really just been giving me opportunity. Mm -hmm. What a better place to be than an opportunity center. Yeah. Where God it, this is a beautiful so facility in opportunity, man. Yeah. So <laughs> it was for me to be here. Everything was destined and everything. But um right now I'm active in my church. Uh, I'm one of the uh, youth advisors, so always look out for one Wednesday out of the month where we have youth night. It be off the chain. We play sports. We play kickball. We play four square. Like all the games I love, I bring Wayne's World to youth night. Okay. And it's off the chain. We have artists come. It's free. We feed them just to give them something to do for a couple of hours and then send them on back. You know, we're just trying to change the mentality and the scenery. So I'm doing that with the church, and um, I'm also uh, doing my football camps, uh, which have grown tremendously. So thank you to everybody that watched those videos, man. Those videos what really sent kids all the way from Pell City. Good deal, good deal. Faithfully coming in here, wanting to learn, and, and thirsting for just to be in the presence of 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 of, of a good spirit. You okay. can see it's what the kids was telling me. You want it ain't just all about sports. Yeah. And um so I'm doing my camps. I'm getting ready to do a basketball fundamentals camp coming up next on June June the third. And uh so I'm looking for kids who don't know much about basketball. I want those kids who are don't know how to go right and left. I want those kids who ride the bench. I want those kids who 
who don't get that attention so that I can educate you, give you some of this crayon knowledge, and you'll be playing and having fun. And your parents won't be wasting their money when they go to games and stuff. So okay. that's what I'm doing now. Also, um, we're going to shoot a movie. You know, it's going to be real, real special. So right now, I'm letting you know this first God has been pulling on me about these uh, getting our youth back. With all the violence and everything that's going on, it's time to take those that are still doing the right thing mm -hmm. and help them get somewhere as well. You know, don't forget about them because so much negativity is going on. Yeah. So we finna get ready to choose a team. I'm gonna put together a basketball team for the West Side and they're gonna represent the Opportunity Center, which will be the Opportunity Kings. And we're gonna do something really, really special for these um, 12 young men that we're gonna start mentoring and, and, and feeding all this crayon knowledge and spirit and just giving them hands-on examples to got, kind of put them on a, a path, okay. a, be a better path okay. than we had. That's you know? what I like to hear. So that's what we're doing right now okay. with the kids. I when got you, a lot going on. As you transition, you just talked about the fundamentals. What was like the deciding factor again for you to say, you know what, I see some of these kids, and again, you just mentioned the bench riders, the guys that don't get a lot of looks, what kind of gave you that heart and that spirit to say, if I can just teach them the crayon, the fundamentals, that crayon knowledge, that they can transform into something better? Because a lot of times, you know this and I know this, sometimes the guys are just as good on the bench that on the field is more mental than physical. Right. And so what right. kind of led you, uh, obviously with God and things, led you to say, you know what, I can take these guys, I can mold them, give them them fundamental, and they can prosper in that aspect. You know how you try to run away from, from things and you'll say, some told me? Mm -hmm. Well, every time I'm around kids, something will pull on me to say something about something they got going on. Uh -huh. I was at coaching at Bessemer, Little League. God sent me from... Park West, we went from Park West for a few years where I became the president and we won a championship. Then he transitioned me to Fultondale where they never won before. Uh -huh. A group of 10 yos, but with a 10 yo, that's my confirmation that I got to go after the 10 yos. Yeah. He gave me a group of 10 yos that never won before but had crazy talent. So the guys were saying that there's no talent over there in the Fultondale League. They soft, as I said. <laughs> so I took a team that didn't win a game in probably since they was um, in Pee Wee Ball, and we went three undefeated championship seasons. And we was playing people in the city. Changed the whole mentality, all because I took some crayon knowledge and crayon said, you know what, man? Come do this. Come do this. So it, it, it pulls on me anytime I'm in football, basketball, golf, kickball, soccer, conversation to correct kids indirectly. Not, no, I don't talk like that, but to say, yeah, I feel you, man, but you know if you talk a little bit less about that right there and the more about this right here, then they're going to want to listen to you, yada, 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 if you're trying to lead this okay. team. It's just, it's just something. It's a, a talent. Okay. It's a talent. Okay. Now – you said earlier in our conversation that you played football, but your love was basketball. Yeah. So you transitioned, moved from Inslee to Central Park Christian. Yes. What happened with that as far as your basketball career and what led you to play football at Miles? Man, now you finna get the story. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm getting ready for the pet rally at Inslee High School. Pet rally's on Fridays. Thursday – a conversation with one of my childhood best friends by the name of Terry Perry. Yeah. Man, you need to come over here to the Christian school with me, boy. They'll love you. Man, I'm telling you, they do this over here. Man, they, they do this over here, the basketball team this. And then he messed around and said something about education around my mom. And she was like, the education what? A Christian school. All my life I've been... God and still, because I come from a single mom, mm -hmm. an older mom. My mom was almost 40 when she had me, so she had already lived in the world. So I got out. I, I had to pass the drug test. Mm -hmm. Well, I got drugged to church. <laughs> drugged to church. Drugged to church. Drug I don't want to go drugged to church. Mm -hmm. Drugged to church. So when she heard Christian school education, 
scholarship, it was an easy decision, easy decision for her to be with me transition from this school at Angela because I'm getting all the attention. Like, it's great at Angela. I love Angela. Mm -hmm. And you can go somewhere from Angela. But it was time for me to leave that atmosphere to transition over here to this atmosphere because when I left Angela, I went from 1,300 students in my senior class to 14 students at Central Park Christian. So now I right, took my mind and just shrunk it down so now I could focus and learn on something that was going to get ready to be bigger than me. So basketball was the transition, was the, what was used for the transition. Mm -hmm. Got the Central Park Christian, got the learning differently. They wouldn't let me cheat. I got over there trying to look on their papers, man. They was <laughs> sliding their papers. What y'all talking about? I'm over here to play basketball. Let me cheat. <laughs> they didn't. They held me accountable. And uh, next thing you know, God bless me with an uh, with a scholarship to Gaston State. So I get the basketball scholarship. I go to Central Park Christian, make all world in basketball, um, averaging thirty points a game. I'm I'm doing numbers, but I'm I'm gifted. You know, I was gifted. I had a forty eight inch vertical. You know, I could dunk without taking steps. You know, it was just all talents and gifts. And um, ended up going to college at Gaston State. Got to Gaston was. Um, Freshman of the year run up in basketball. Had a daughter. No dad. So I said, I gotta go home. I gotta take care of this little girl. So I walked away from a scholarship. And God opened up a door when I got home and Lawson found out that I transferred, that I had left, and Lawson snatched me up with another scholarship. Get to Lawson State on my uh, first team, All American. I'm a uh, Player of the year, offensive player of the year in junior college. Uh, I averaged 30 points in junior college. I love basketball. And when I get through, I run in the stands and put the ball up a little bit, put it in my mouth. Because I'm playing dad now. Yeah. I'm playing dad and basketball. Next thing you know, I'm getting ready to go to the um, a scholarship was presented by the Tennessee Volunteers for basketball. Next thing you know, I get there, um, check out the campus, visit. I'm excited. Man, I'm going to go to Tennessee, you know. Come back home, talk to my cousin, Michael Howard. I never will forget this. He was like, ride up the miles with me. I'm from Birmingham, and I never knew where miles was. Mm. Right there, Fabio. I ain't never, ever been to Miles College in my life in Birmingham till I got to Miles College. Mm -hmm. That part of... Midfield, we just didn't travel. Mm -hmm. You know, we go to the mall and we hit the back way, but we just never got over in the in the, in the hood part of Fairfield. Uh -huh. I took that ride to Miles with him, and never knowing that that was the ride that was gonna change my life. Change life. It literally changed my life. So I get there with him, and I'm just sitting in the stands while Coach Cecil Leonard just got the job. Mike was his quarterback at Parker High School, so he. Transferred from Alabama State to Miles to change change the culture, and then next thing you know, I'm sitting in the stands watching them practice, like sitting back, like next thing you know, Mike asked me to come down. Hey dog, come here right quick. Help me warm up my arm. I catch a couple of balls. I catch a couple of balls. I haven't played football in three years. I left Angela in my 11th grade year. I didn't play football my 12th grade year. I didn't play football my freshman year in college. I didn't play football my junior year, my, my sophomore year in college. So I hadn't took a lick in three years. When I left the game, they were teenagers. When I returned back to the game, they were 20. <laughs> <laughs> when I left, they were like 16. You know, mm -hmm. this is a whole different mindset. So Mike threw me a pass. I'm helping him warm up. And that led to Coach Leonard seeing me catch the ball. I was a high school quarterback. I wonder why I receiver in high school. Yeah. I would go to wide receiver on fourth and 20 and get the first down and then go back to quarterback. Yeah. So I was like, man, I ain't finna play no football. Man, he must be crazy. Mike was like, dog, Coach wants you to play, man. I'm telling you, he wants you to play. So I ended up going back up there with him the next day. I'm just hanging out, so waiting on him to get out of practice so we can kick it. Yeah. God rest Coach Leonard's soul. That just lets you know how you can't be manipulated. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing, but it's a gift and a curse, let me tell you. Because back then, 
you couldn't receive no money from people. Yeah, yeah. Now they got the NIL and now it's all legal. The, yeah, it's legal. Yeah, they got all this <laughs> it's other legal. Stuff. You can get you some money now, and yeah. it, that the name be said. So, me and Mike was uh, we was leaving the locker room. I'm just riding with him, but I would hang out for a couple of hours for the practice. I wasn't doing that. Mm -hmm. I think Coach might have bought us some chicken from the little um, Ray Sean, uh, another one of Fairfield Greats, also was uh, one of our first NBA referees to come out of Fairfield, mm -hmm. uh, Ray Sean Michaels, shout out to him. And uh, he had a store on the corner by the gym in my house. We would go there and get chicken. His mom would cook the best chicken. They had the best cakes and all that. And now Omar is taking over the cakes, and the cakes are great, so shout out to Omar. But uh, we would go down to that store and eat good chicken and stuff. Coach Lund would be like, I got it. See y'all tomorrow. I'm like, man, Coach, cool. Later on, Mike was like, Coach wants you to uh, come up here and holler. I said, no, nah, dog, I'm getting ready to go to school. He's like, no, nah, dog, you ain't going to be able to go. I said, why? He said, man, Coach said that if you leave, he going to report you, man. He gave you money. I said, man, he ain't gave me no money. <laughs> he, said, he gave me a series like, dog, I'm talking about like the chicken you ate. Man, go pay for that, man. He, 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 I said, man, for real, he can do that? He was like, dog, dog, just go holler at him, man. <laughs> I was nervous right mm -hmm. then. Like, man, what you mean? What I come up here for? I ain't for football. Coach was like, yeah, I took care of you. What, what size what size pants you want? I said, Coach, I don't play no football. <laughs> I said, Coach, I ain't played football in three years. Oh, come on over here, and we're gonna turn this program around and set it, set it, set it, and all this good stuff. And yeah, and I'm like, Nah, Coach, I don't play no football. So I walked out feeling good. No, nah, I ain't playing no football. Went back up there with Mike. Next thing you know, the next week, I was out there running routes. Mm. <laughs> Just that quick. Just that quick. Just that quick. I jumped. Right back into football mode. It was no fear. It was like, all right, I'm finna go do this again. I'm finna do it at home. Okay, we got this team. This guy from Parker, this guy, twin them from Inchley. Like, we got we got a squad. Okay. All right, let's do this. All okay. right. What is your, out of all the time you play sports, what is the best memory you have in, in, at any level, whether it's Pop Warner or professional of of sports, whether it's winning or just a game, you had an amazing game, or being around the guys. Oh, man, that's easy. Angela High School, Fair Park Arena, where we playing against West End High School, and they kept a stacked team. Because mm -hmm. I came from a basketball team at Glenn Middle School where we went 20-0, and 0, two seasons undefeated, and we had some of the best – Best. I've always been on winning teams with stacked athletes, man. I'm talking about gifted athletes. And um, we beat West End. We were down by two with six seconds on the clock inside Fair Park Arena. And as um, soon as Bug, Phillip Adams, took the ball out and threw it to me, I took one dribble and let it go. And it hit the backboard and went in. We won by one. The first championship with Coach Maurice Ford. So that was Coach Ford's first championship right okay. and everything. So that's one of my fondest memories. Everybody rushed out the stands and jumped on my head and all I could hear is my mama saying, get off him, get off him, he got asthma, he got asthma, get off him. But man, that was one of the best moments that sports has given me. Okay. Not to mention Miles College, let's go to Miles. Let's go to Tuskegee when we played Tuskegee. And we was down and uh, we're about, about two or three seconds on the clock. And these two guys, before we came out the huddle, they were just staring at me. Like, you ain't finna catch this ball. Mm -hmm. And I can remember like it was yesterday, the safety and the corner just talking trash at me, man. This last thing, yeah, we came down here and got y'all this time in our backyard. And phew, we threw it. Doug was the quarterback. He threw it, and I caught it over both of them. Mm -hmm. Right in the smallest part of the end zone in the corner, like no more inches and nothing like that and caught that ball man it was it was amazing so. okay what is the wayne thomas not the good moment but like the lowest moment of your uh career in sports that moment besides you told us earlier that like you just you can't stop thinking about any at any level mm -hmm. like that that you know like for me is 
probably when I didn't go to college. That's my lowest moment. I had different scholarships, but I didn't take it. Right. That bothers me today. But I wouldn't change it because right. I got two wonderful babies It's part now. of your past. It's part of my past. Yeah. But what's that moment for you? Man, everything I went through from hindsight now looking in the river mirror was part of my process. Okay. It was part of my process. Uh, my freshman year at Miles, I was at basketball practice. I played football and basketball for Miles. A lot of folks don't know. But my freshman year, coming out of football season, I transitioned right into basketball because that's how we did at Inch. Mm -hmm. And um, I was on the court. The next thing you know, I get this, I get a call and I'm finding out that my mom had just had a stroke. So I'm like, what? And like I said, it's always just been me and her. Mm -hmm. so being without her, um, my majority of my college season, I didn't have my mom. My freshman year, I didn't have my mom. She was sick in the hospital. So I would go to practice and practice would be my family. You know, and I would uh, didn't want to leave practice, so I hang out at the dorm a little while, just enough to when it get really, really dark, then go home so I could sleep, hop back on campus, and then go to the campus to the hospital. So as transition there, it was different for me. So now I'm raising myself. I'm going in the house. I'm cutting the lights on. I gotta cook. I gotta make sure I got this. I gotta make sure I got this, and I got a daughter. So it was it was a tough transition. Then later on, we want to get on to the lower moments. Um, Getting to, I can remember getting to, to Canada, to the CFL. CFL. I got to Calgary, man, and I can just remember it just being not what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't my type of football. It was 12 on 12. The field was wide. The field was long. It was just like, you know what? This just ain't where I want to be, man. I, I, so I got to go into practice, man, and practicing at 50% sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> some cats give 50%, that's they all, but that one that average one me, all. yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it started to show. Okay. So, won a championship in Canada, won a great cup, transition, so we got the Steel Dogs. And I got revived when they come, like, come home and play some indoor football, like basketball? Man, I'm there. And that, that took that low moment and shot it right on back up in sports. Okay. Yeah. Um, in your playing career, did you ever take any hard hits? Yes. Who got you? Man, I took my hardest leg against Alabama a and Okay. I had never returned punts in my life. Mm -hmm. It was pouring down raining. So Coach Leonard wanted me to go and secure the catch. I ain't know no rules. If you're standing on the 10, you let it go. You know, foul catch it if you can't advance it. I was just going to catch this ball, and I was just going to catch this ball. Man, it was raining, and I never took my eyes off that ball. And I think it's a video somewhere. Somebody showed me the video. And, man, as soon as that ball touched my hand, when I tell you, he hit me so hard till I, I saw, like, dots. <laughs> I saw dots. I've been there. He hit me so hard till when I got up. Because you got to get right back up, that dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to get back up. Yeah. But I ain't know that I was going to A&M huddle. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in they huddle. Yeah, you in they huddle. I ain't realize it was in they huddle till they over there. Yeah, ooh, he just knocked you out. <laughs> yeah. I turned around and then I walked on back to my huddle. But yeah, he got me, man. Gotcha. Yeah, he got me. Uh, he cleaned for my me, clock. For me, I was... Uh, a sophomore in high school, because at that time, minor didn't have freshmen. Sophomore, fresh up there, getting ready to start the team with a stacked team my sophomore year. Okay. We made it all the way undefeated. We lost in the second round of the playoffs at home. Uh, still a moment that's real hard to deal with, even after all these years. Right. Like it, it still bothers me right. today, because that was a state championship team. And so I'm – you know, wide-eyed, learning. At yeah, this time, yeah. I looked up to, like, Peter Ward. Like, that was the guy that really made me want to, like, be a wide receiver. And so I'm young. I'm on the scout team, man. And this guy named Kenneth Hollis, who mm -hmm. ended up um, getting a scholarship to LSU, he made it to NFL, made it to CFL and stuff. Okay. And I ran this slant. And I, I, I don't know. After that, I don't know. I just clock. remember making that cut. 
and putting them hands up and next thing I know they were like hey man you alright so that was like my heart is hit but it's just funny when you play sometimes you know you get hit and it's just all part of the game but you get back up and live but that on. wasn't my hardest that was my hardest hit from a person from a person but the ground the gr yeah. yeah the yeah. ground mm -hmm. has broke my nose three times dang Dang. I done went and caught a pass, and when I came down in the ground, my helmet has came down and sh I mean, the bars and smashed on top of my nose all three times. Man. Okay. So, okay. that's a brutal sport. It is. <laughs> but it's fun. But it's fun. Um, as we continue on with our interview, you we talk about your playing days. We talk about some of the things you do. I'm sitting here. Obviously, you have your, your wife out there. Yes. Tell me about you, how my wife. when you met her and how she helped you become the person you are today. Oh, man. Meeting my wife was nothing but God. Uh -huh. I can try to say some of the other things, but if you look at how it happened, she saw me 10 years before we ever had a conversation. We ended up being at the same park at Park West. I became the president. She was quiet. I asked her if she would work in the concession stand for me. And that led to us communicating. Next thing you know, she was out there helping me line the football field. She had a little small, um, a little uh, Elantra, a little small <laughs> Elantra. And I would have uh, the cones so we can mark the field. And I get in the back of her trunk. And had the cones and then she pulled down every line. I put one down, put one down. So she's good. Got her nice white car on this football field. So I was like, man, this is something peculiar about her. Ten years before, she had saw me somewhere and asked about me. Ten years later, we met. Ten years later, we got married. Okay. So she's really, really came in, and, and God has really sent her to be my help me okay she she's solid she rock solid she she's loyal like god knew exactly what i needed because i'm different mm -hmm. and i ain't really easy to put up with <laughs> you know yeah. i'm kind of sheltered i'm a counselor and my mom it's just been me and my mom so when i tell you he sent me somebody that he had for me and i'm so happy with him so okay i'm grateful well we i've Talk to you. I've asked you a lot of questions. Um, you definitely put on for the city with some of your future plans, some of the things you're doing with these kids. I have enjoyed this opportunity to get a little bit personal with you and yes. just tell your story. Yes. Um, I do this show. It's called United. It's about empowering and inspiring the next generation for right. greatness. And I don't limit this just to African Americans, even right. though it's mainly for them, right. because. If you don't never see people do things, how do you have a blueprint for success? Mm -hmm. And so your success has been tremendous with great accolades all throughout high school, great accolades at Miles, one of the most decorated players in the SWAC I'm sitting here with. And then you transition into other football. Now you're moving on out of sports and you're doing things for the community, making your money, which is beautiful for us because we need to see people operate in that type of space so we can be successful yes. now as we move forward in this city uh -huh. what are, what are some of the things you think you would like to see maybe not just from the mayor but as a city we start to do besides the obvious you know stop yeah, killing each other yeah, we got to start doing more something. things together when we grew up there was so much stuff together to do, together to it made you want to go outside and, and, and see the guys from the north, from the south, from the west side, from Bessemer, from all around meeting in the same places, having a good time. So we got to get that back, that camaraderie, that togetherness. And um, that's what I'm trying to do with okay. my Wayne's World. Um, my goal is to fertilize today's youth with a different focus. Just let me give y'all a different way of looking at things. When I do my camps, I bring them in here. I teach them how to speak. Nobody wants to listen to somebody say, um, and on oh God, and bruh. I take all that out of their conversations. Then when they come up here, they give God the glory. They, they thank their parents, and they talk less about themselves. Because I told them, let somebody else tell you about you. That's yeah. the best person watching you. There you go. Let there somebody you go. else I, tell you how great you are. Uh, you ain't got to worry about it. You know that. But let them tell you, man. Mm -hmm. You know, don't you have to, you don't have to boast about that. Yeah. When you're good, you talk about yourself. 
when you great, other people talk about Ooh, you. Ooh, that's deep. <laughs> that's deep. That's deep. So I want to get his testimony before we yeah. end. Yeah, yeah. Because people see me and they be like, man, you're always in shape. You, you, you're still the same size. You still look the same as if nothing ever happened. But what they don't understand is God has totally reset my life. How, he, how did he reset my life? He, I had three heart attacks back to back to back in about three hours, two flat lines, and I'm back. So life, it's a total life or death reset in my life to be able to come out now and be an octopus for him, be able to do this and do this and do this and do this because I don't want to waste my talents and gifts. Oh, you're taking from me and giving to somebody else. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, man, I'm bouncing back. I bounced back. It's been three years after three heart attacks and two flat lines. It's been three years, and I am 110% healthy. I have no setbacks. I have no medicines, only a baby aspirin that I take. You know, God has just supernaturally healed me. And when he supernaturally healed me, he renewed my mind. So now I can see them kids and I almost be like, okay, yeah, bet. I can see a kid and a kid would be sitting under an umbrella. And other kids are seeing him and be like, what's wrong with him? Look at him sitting up under an umbrella talking about he in his house. But I see a house. And they don't understand that that's how engineering starts. Mm -hmm. What looks like an umbrella to you is a mansion to him. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just, it's awesome, man, that the comeback is real and, and I'm on fire. And then I everything that I do, man, I'm doing it to to represent the Lord and to represent Ansley. Like, I'm from the hood. Like, what? I'm from the hood. Do you I remember from the, the Central Alabama Bulldog? Oh, that was, that was some fun times. So give me man. give me your highlight. What's oh, your highlight man, on that we, team, man? Because we, we played. Uh, was that a quarterback? Yeah, he's quarterback then. And we went to America's Georgia. I think you had quit then. You didn't play this game. And we played against the team, and they were so bad. Like this older guy named J.W., man, called a ball, hit a dude with a stutter step, and went like 80 yards untouched. Tracy had like a 90-yard touchdown. Wow. And like we scored like 70 to nothing in the first half. Wow. And they quit. Like this team was so bad, they had shirts and they had like their numbers written Whoa. on the shirt. <laughs> that was like one of my fondest memories, just catching up with the old guys and still playing. Yeah. But that was just a crazy team, a crazy yeah, time. Yeah. And I'll never forget, we drove to America's Georgia, and we we put a whooping on them boys. Wow. Man. And it's, I mean, like, guys you never would think would go roll. Like, we just doing whatever we want. You know, it's yeah, just that, that that time. And yeah, that's all. Yeah, we had fun. Yeah, fun. I just always remember that. I remember you. I remember D. Um, Shout out to D. Antro. Yeah, D. Antro. He yes. was out there. Tracy Johnson. Yes. Now, it was a lot of cats out there. Michael Johnson was out there. And a lot of guys mm -hmm. came out, man. And we just had so much fun. Man, so much talent. And right? I, I remember that, man. Oh, Oh man, so that that's that was it. But I thank you for the interview. I thank, I thank you, you for your time, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Bless you. Continue your success, man. Continue your success. Keep doing what you're doing. All right.